Last week, I took my first shot at a coaxial counter-rotating fan. I made a PLA Plus gearbox and had independent axles spinning symmetric fans with the duct wrapped around the gearbox. It was a nice introduction to bevel gears and gearbox design, but beyond that, it was a duct tape and super glue mess. Considering the gearbox also blocked a significant part of the flow inside the duct, I knew pretty early on that this design had to be completely reworked. My goal for this next iteration was to 1. stage the fans away from the gearbox somehow, and then 2. improve the 3D printed gearbox itself. I would say I succeeded about halfway, but I'll let you judge. Here's a demonstration of the fan. This one shows the fan in the duct. And then for this clip, I'm going to slow it down as much as I can so you can see the fans rotating in opposite directions. I'm just going to go straight into the SolidWorks assembly so I can demonstrate how this coaxial system works. The key is making the fan side axle hollow and then feeding the aft axle through it to get rotation on the other side. One fan sits on the hollow axle, which rotates one way, and then the other fan sits on the coupler attached to the skinnier axle that goes through the hollow one, and it rotates the other way. The tricky part about this design was eliminating any deflection from the axles. I originally thought I could get away with a cantilever design with two bearings clamping down one end of both axles, but I'm using PLA in this demonstration and that would just not work. It would obviously probably work with something like aluminum. The inner axle itself is only four millimeters, and so I knew I needed to hold the end of the axle up on the other side as well. So by letting the inner axle go through the back of the duct, the entire axle system is straight. Both axles are still clamped down by two ball bearings on one end. I had to make a coupler that extends the axle system for the hollow axle to get the fans away from the gearbox. I guess the fan axle side is still technically in cantilever because there's nothing holding on the other side, but I'm pretty sure the setup allows for a very nice straight axle system. But let me know what you think. Anyways, I'm now going to get into the gearing and material side of this project. This is a really good time to bring up today's sponsor, PCBWay. I've gotten a lot of suggestions to print in alternate materials, especially for the gears, and PCBWay has graciously offered to print some nylon parts for me. Unfortunately, and this is probably the case for most of you watching, we don't have access to these really fancy tools, or our 3D printers aren't capable of printing certain materials very well. This is where PCBWay services come in. I just upload any SCL I want to their website, I get an instant quote, and then they can have it shipped out in as fast as 24 hours. So instead of spending tens of thousands of dollars on, say, an SLS printer, PCBWay can get me these parts while being quick and affordable. I downsized the gears themselves significantly as well. The idea was to still have stronger teeth, but reduce the contact area. However, I know gear design is a whole world, and I don't really know what I'm talking about. With the smaller teeth, my PLA gears would melt only a couple runs in. Luckily, I did have some pet on the way, which was highly recommended over PLA for its higher melting temperature and overall resistance to wear and stress. I had a bit of issues printing PETG on my really cheap Ender 3s. That's why this video took so long to make. Side note, if you're printing on these Ender printers like the ones I have, I found it's best if you just change out the nozzle for each filament you use. I was getting huge layer and bed adhesion issues before that. I know with the fancier printers, they're able to purge the filament from the nozzle. It's a lot harder to do on these printers, and honestly, it's just easier to change out the nozzles if you have a ton of extra. And these PETG gears turned out really great. I stuck them in the gearbox and then used this weird bicycle chain lube I had lying around. From what I understand, PTFE-based lubricant is safe for plastics, and so I kind of just went for it. I figured it couldn't hurt. I think ideally I would use something like graphite lube, something dry, but I didn't want to go out and get dry lube just for this. And so I added a few drops to the gears themselves and spun it around. It worked pretty well inside the gearbox. I couldn't get many testing clips because I ended up having fan alignment issues. After about 20 minutes of testing, which included an incident where the fan accidentally went full throttle for like 10 seconds, the gears seemed to be holding up pretty well. So the Petchy and Lube combined is definitely order of magnitudes better than what I was running with my dry PLA Plus gear setup. I am obviously getting these nylon parts though, and nylon just can't be beat for an application like this. So with the fan staging and gearbox stuff kind of out of the way, we can get to aerodynamics. While the underlying motivation of this project was to make a fan with zero net angular momentum on the fan axis, there's also a huge amount of performance benefits that could be had from this fan staging setup. One of the biggest pros of this design is that there is theoretically an extremely small amount of blockage in the duct itself. In a regular ADF, you have an inline motor inside the ducts, and so your exhaust area is effectively limited by the size of this motor. When the motor is away from the fan though, the only thing inhibiting the flow is the front and back of the axle itself. 
Also, the duct doesn't require any stators. Technically, since there's no motor, the only reason to add stators would be for rigidity's sake, or in this case, supporting the fan axle on the back end. While motor stators do work to straighten the flow of a traditional EDF, the counter-rotating fans in this should theoretically do the same, and so that eliminates the aerodynamic need for the motor stators. I was much more concerned about the feasibility of this fan setup than the aerodynamics, and this is extremely obvious as the inlet of the fan is about an inch away from the gearbox. I know very well from the monocopter projects I was doing that putting things in front of the fan really tanks its performance. I even considered putting the gearbox on the back of the fan, but maybe some aerodynamics people can explain why that's a worse idea. Anyways, I didn't really know how my axles were going to deflect, so that's why I made it so close to the fan, but in theory the fan can be staged infinitely far from the gearbox using really long axles and maybe more of those couplers to keep the axles from deflecting. So, and I'm saying this phrase a lot, but in theory the gearbox doesn't have to obstruct the flow at all. Lastly, I printed out these pretty basic FDM propellers. They're very thick, not shaped well, and not as pitched as they should be, but at least the airfoil profile came out. I will focus on propeller design long after everything else is straightened out. Same for nose cones, exhaust tubes, inlet lifts, the whole works. There are still some fundamental issues with this design. First off, the rotation of the motor is not counteracted by anything. Some possible solutions to this could be adding another gear uh, that spins something of an equal mass in the opposite direction of the motor on the other side. I'm wondering if this is even as much of a problem as having angular momentum on the fan axis, since on a traditional airplane, for example, the rotation of the motor is a pitch issue, uh, which can be relatively controlled using thrust and control surfaces. This gearbox thing is also obviously a lot harder than I thought it would be. I'm hoping nylon parts will solve this issue, but there's still always going to be transmission loss. Plus, tolerances have become a huge issue as there's so many moving parts in this assembly. So it's just more to keep track of. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. If you know anything about fan aerodynamics, gear design, or even printing tips, I'd love to hear them. Most of these ideas from the lube and PETG to the bearings to the gear design are all from social media comments and conversations. So I'll keep you guys updated on the progress and I really hope to get some thrust testing soon. It's just, again, the gearbox design is a lot harder than I thought, and so I'm going to need a little more time for that.